Hi there. I wanted to give an idea of um, starting out the dissection process and to give you a sort of insight into what I do. This comment is I haven't put much on the website and it's quite right. And I want to show what I'm talking about. So um, this clip coming up, I start uh, by peeling back the skin. We look at the skin, the relationship uh, to the underlying fatty layer. Um, and then from there, I go on and examine the fatty layer itself, discuss the fibers that all connect it up. So this is all content that was live streamed the last time, or was it the time before anyway, uh, that I was dissecting. And it gives you an idea of how we can create a really close up view of what it is that we're doing. And in many ways, I think you get you know much more, to see much more this way than you were if actually present. Um, I use my handheld microscope at different times. I really get into that. There's a little clip of that in here as well. And this brings a massive impact to understanding you know, what it is we're looking at and how it behaves under the microscope. So the reason this session is so important is for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's an area of anatomy that is pretty much ignored, particularly in traditional anatomy and often even within facial um, discussions in the community. The skin and the fat gets you know, trimmed away and thrown in the bin to get to deep fascia or, or a muscle layer and we forget what's on outside of us. And that's the, the, the reason that this is the second most reason why it's important is because this is the layer that we feel and touch when we work on people or when we work with people. And it's where most of our sensation as humans comes from. It's in the surface tissues that we touch, hug, feel warmth and cold through. And it's the interface for the world around us. The fatty layer is also um, it's got a lot of hormonal activity going on and it, it really, the theory is it makes it a massive endocrine organ. It potentially makes it the biggest organ in the body. And additionally in here, the, the cells that are in here, the fat cells, just get bigger the fatter we get. They don't get, we don't get more fat cells as adults. The fat cells just expand. So the other thing I want to mention is that this content is dependent entirely on the donors who give their bodies for us to work on when they die and also their families who let them go and entrust their loved ones to people like me. Um, I cannot thank you enough um, for, for the donors and the families and I dedicate this to all the donors and families around the world for their invaluable gift. Um, if you'd like to know more about donating your body um, only in the UK when you die, I don't know about the rest of the world, uh, but you can certainly find more information um, at your, about your nearest centre that you can donate your body to at hta.gov.uk and this is the link uh, just here. Battery is fine. So we're going to keep this umbilicus as a reference point and we'll just, um, we'll just take a little incision we'll come up to the sternum from here. And, okay, and it's up. Up to the sternum, up to the sternum, and again. So, like we did before, we just dropped into that a little bit more. And I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep the the uh, the navel as a reference, and I'm going to come all the way around this. So, we want to uh, take that all so the way around. Just scoring with that. Then. I'm just scoring it, it, it just to to make my mark. I don't know how deep I'm going to have to go. Sometimes, what you think you think is, oh, he's really skinny. And you can end up with with two inches of um, adipose tissue and then you see somebody that's really fat and you've got a tiny bit of adipose and they're all endomorphic you know they're all mm -hmm. all their all their fat is in their in their viscera um, so I'm just scoring it just to make it uh, to sort of make it a, a mark as to where I can then carry on from okay so uh, we're gonna come around the edge of the abelic I can take the skin off a little bit on this um, just to start off with and then I'll come back and I'll take the um, superficial fascia and uh, as well so I'll take some skin first so it's um these things lose their uh, yeah. they lose their their their, um, their their sharpness really really quickly because like I said skin does not like to give up um, its superficial fascia so it, the the blades go blunt really really Switch. really really fast thank you very much okay and and you'll see this the moment I put put it to this immediately you see it's a there you go, see that? There you go. thank you sir. Um, and, I, and I'm only doing this, normally when I'm doing this, what I do is I fold the skin over and I get tension underneath it. And you can start to see that I'm coming sort of like that. And the reason I'm doing it like this is just because I'm filming it. All right, so just nobody's in the shot there, are there? It's great. Mm -hmm. So where we have corners, the dissection is always better where we have corners. 
So again, we just scored that out. And we're keeping this intact just so we can investigate what the scar might be because, you know, sometimes we've gone in and we've gone, oh, I wish I'd filmed that, I wish I'd. So I'm kind of gonna film almost everything I do here because um, I don't wanna miss a trick and I don't know what value it will be later on. You can't go back in time and go, oh, there we go. But if I've got everything or mostly everything I do on film, then I can, yeah, makes sense. Mm -hmm. And if we just look at this fella here, okay, what's that? Mm. I don't know. We're just getting down. You see, he's quite skinny onto here. And I want to show you the reason I'm wanting to do this on him here like, like this now is because in a minute, what we can then do is we can come back. Uh, we'll take this off around here. And we will come up and we'll take this. I want to hang on to this scarring to here. Um, and I'm going to come around the edge of the rib cage. Um, just down to here like that. So we got a little flap of tissue from around there. So we're gonna come all the way up, we're gonna take all this skin back, and then we're gonna take the superficial fascia off it, just on this side, and we're gonna come and kind of come underneath it. I don't wanna get too quickly um, into towards any kind of viscera, um, because I don't wanna um, uh, spoil the end of the week, but um, we have got so much. Generally speaking, in, the, in, the, in, a, in a, a five day dissection, uh, we will leave probably, um, you know, you've got six or seven people on a, a table um, and we'll still leave um, a significant percentage behind because you can't examine everything um, in, in detail uh, in five days. Okay, let go. So, See how yellow this is, you know, this is this beautiful yellow. And this is the same for all of us, you know, um, and where everybody is um, varying degrees of color, but, but in terms of the yellow. Um, and, uh, but yellow or, or orange is another color you see. Sometimes there's some green in there, but generally speaking, everybody, once you get through this um, uh, first layer of skin, or well, this layer of skin is, is, is yellow. So here we, got, here we got our viscera. You know, when we talk about vis visceral manipulation, what's going on, look, here you go. Yeah, that looks so cool. <laughs> Not like, I mean, yeah, it looks cool. I'm yeah. Stick with that word. <laughs> no, stay with it. It does yeah. look cool. It does, you know, look at, the, look at differentiated movement here. Well, what have we got going on all over the place? So now what we're doing here, if I pull this area, we're pulling down the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. You can also see it pulling yeah, on the outside. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all the way yeah. through. Yeah. All yeah. the way through into there. Now, so we have all kinds of things. We can breathe in and out because we're frightened or shocked. Uh, we can have a, a, an autonomic nervous system response. We can have a response as far as an immune system response is concerned. Uh, we can breathe in and out because we're smelling something. We've got triggers for that. It can be emotional response. There's so many factors that cover us as far as our breath is concerned. And again, sensory and perception. Um, so, so really, you know, when somebody says you, you're breathing in through your, your diaphragm or, or your So I'm just going to start from the edge of the rib cage, just down from the sternum, and I just want to pick what up the superficial fascia and see if we can separate the layer of the superficial fascia away from uh, the uh, the rest of the abdomen. And we've got to be quite careful because I don't really know how much there is here. So when we when we're talking about dissection, we're always talking about changes in texture um, rather than there necessarily being um, clear clear models of, of something to follow. Okay, so, and there we go, there we go. And I just gotta, there we are. Uh, I, think I, I think I hit a bit of muscle. I think I've hit a bit of rectus. Okay, yeah, see that there? Okay, see that's muscle. So I've gone too deep, and the moment my scalpel hits muscle, falls apart, yeah? So there's no integrity to muscle. Um, it, it just falls apart. The moment your scalpel hits a muscle, you're done. So I've gone a little bit deep onto there, too quick, too fast. Um, and hit, so I'm gonna come, come back a little bit. It's just gone through the top edge of the sheet. It's always instructive. It's never a case of, oh no, I screwed it. Now the fibers are a little bit weaker than they are attaching to the skin, um, but 
they are still strong fibers. Look at this fiber as it blends through the superficial fascia onto the layer of the rectus sheath. Can you see? This is the rectus sheath here. Mm -hmm. These are the fibers of the superficial fascia. Okay, so as we pull that back a bit there, see that there? So again, as I just scratch away some of the fatty tissue, and we leave these bit of fibers behind here, yeah. I just wanted to show you, uh, you know, the mistake that I've been making for all this time is to go, we're gonna cut the superficial fascia off and we're gonna call it a fascial layer. Mm. And instead, what I wanna show you is, look, can you see the deep aponeurotic layer of the rectus sheath? And can you see the fibers of the superficial fascia with these little, with these little fat globules in between? So if we just go take it a little bit further, and we do the same thing as we did before. We just gently scratch away at some of these fibers. Mm -hmm. Then we can start to understand a little bit more as to how these fibers are integrated into our deeper layers of what we would therefore call deep fascia. So, you know, the reality of it is there is no deep fascia in any more than there is anything else. This is the fascia that is encasing and holding uh, the adipocytes. And this is the fascia down in here that's encasing and holding the muscle fibers. Mm. They've just got a different job to do, but they're the same tissue and the same structure coming from the same cell producing the same protein. They just happen to be arranged in a different way. Mm. See that? Where does that superficial fascia fiber begin and the aponeurosis of the rectus abdominis, the aponeurotic sheet-like, fascia of the aponeurosis begin and end. Okay, now as it so happens, what we have done is, yeah, I did this deliberately, uh, was to make a little hole in the rectus sheath. And yeah, so now you can see again, underneath this, see the rectus sheath appears to have fibers that are going up and down, that are acting perpendicular to the fibers of the rectus abdominis. See these fibers here, look, going that way. And these fibers are going that way. Actually, look, they're only going that way because I'm pulling them that way. If I lifted them up and put them down here, which way are they going? Down and in, thank you. Down and in, so they're blending in. And then the skin is gonna come back down and form a ceiling of those collagen fibers where the collagen fibers are attaching to the underside of the skin. So this is where I'm gonna carry on and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this a little bit more so we get the idea of the, of, the, of, the, of the fleece, if you like, the fleece effect, and I'll show you some images of it. But I, I, have, um, I have sort of abandoned this model um, that, you know, I inherited the model. I, I you know, I, this is what I learned when I was doing dissection. Um, I, I'd learned dissection. I didn't have a model to work with. Um, I picked up Gill's model and it's Gill Headley's model that I followed for many, many years. And so, and, and this is the problem that we have because what tends to happen sometimes Sometimes is we get down to a layer of connective tissue and we go which direction do I go because it appears that the deep fascia is going in many different directions and so we end up with these different windows of, of, of deep fascia and we have to choose one but actually it's not different windows of deep fascia it's different layers of superficial fascial fibers where they've come down and continue to integrate into different different planes mm. yeah and, and that's the mistake that we make and I think the whole fascial world has been making the same mistake we're tending to go for the tissues that we want to examine. And, and in order to get to the tissues that we're really interested in, we cut away all the stuff that we're not interested in, yeah? Mm -hmm. And so in doing that, we then, we, we aren't able to understand those relationships because we've destroyed them in the journey of getting to the thing that we want to investigate. So I hope you found that useful. Um, remember that maybe the next time as you touch skin or you move these tissues around that you can feel those fibers blending all the way through. Remember, they, they, they are continuous, they don't stop. There are no layers as such. They are just the layers that we create with a, with a dissection knife. That they, Those fibers continue all the way through muscle, all the way into bone, and essentially all the way to the spinal cord. You know, Dean Newhan in, in his book, Job's Body, says that the, the skin is the surface of the brain. And certainly that's where we experience, as I said earlier, when we experience the world from is this interface. So as I said, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully it was instructive. Please uh, don't forget to like, share, uh, leave your comments in the section below and uh, let me know what you think. Um, and hopefully um, see you next time. Bye for now.